Imagine I make the following claim. There is a teapot, which is too small to be seen by telescopes, and it orbits the sun somewhere around Mars. Let's say I don't offer any proof or evidence for my claim. Would you believe me? Well, you can't disprove me, since I said the teapot is too small to be observed. Bertrand Russell, who formulated this analogy, thought that even though this assertion could not be proven wrong, he would not expect anyone to believe in this teapot. When we make a claim, for example, I believe in X, we ought to give some rational justification on why we believe in X. So, a proper way to present your claim is, I believe X because of Z. Z being some argument or observable evidence. Now people can respond to your claim by expressing why they believe Z to be insufficient. If they are right, and Z is your only reason for believing X, you should be left with no reason why you believe X. Meaning you should probably stop believing X. If you are only gonna state I believe X with no additional justification, then all other people can say is simply good for you? Ideally, every belief would need some rational justification, which is basically what philosophy is about. Marco says, I believe in A for the reason B. And then Peter replies, I believe B to be insufficient for the reason C. And then Marco says, I believe C misses the point because of the reason D. And Peter is like, I believe D misses the point. But surely we can agree on E. This might seem like it leads nowhere, which often is the case in discussions. However, this is the only way for us to have a rational discussion. Imagine Marco saying, I believe A, and Peter replying, I believe B. And then, okay, bye. A more reasonable response for Peter would be, why do you believe A? If Marco would argue, because no one can prove me wrong, Peter can play the same game and argue for the existence of Russell's teapot. Russell's teapot is usually, but not solely, invoked in discussions concerning the existence of God. The concept of this analogy has influenced more explicit religion parodies, such as the invisible pink unicorn and the flying spaghetti monster, which are two beings you can't really disprove, since they are invisible and undetectable. Russell's analogy is convincing because it alerts us about the misuse of the burden of proof. If you are going to believe something, better explain why you do. If you are going to shift the burden of proof on the disbeliever, I wish you good luck with disproving Russell's teapot.